Well hello there and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and this beginner's guide to Photoshop elements. In the previous video we looked at importing and organizing photos inside the organizer. In this video we're going to look at a couple of basic editing modes here inside of elements that go by the names of quick fix and the guided edit mode. And just to let you know, in order to leave the slideshow that we finished up with in the last video, I just simply hit the escape key and that brought me back to here. Now I'm going to scroll around the organizer until I get to this photograph right here. It's a photograph of a bridge in Regent's Park down in London. Now if I select it, I can see over here in the properties panel that the actual name of the image is DSC 02739. And that name was given to the shot automatically by the camera when the photograph was taken. Now for library or archive purposes it's fine, but we can name it something more descriptive if we really want to. All we got to do is come over here to the properties panel and type in the new name, something like Regents Park Bridge uh, will do very nicely. Okay, now let's say I want to perform a few basic modifications to this image. Something like adjusting the colours and the brightness, just generally making it look better. You know the kind of stuff I mean. Well, there's a few ways we can work here inside of Elements. I'm going to make sure I've got the Regents Park photograph selected here. And then I'm going to come up here to these coloured tabs at the top of the side panel here and hit the Fix option. Now we've got some options for fixing the image and I'm going to come back down here and double click on the photograph so we can see a better view of it, just so we can see what's going on as we work our way through here. Now the buttons at the top here, starting with Auto Smart Fix and ending at Crop, will directly edit the image we have active inside the organizer. And all the work, by the way, is happening inside the organizer at this stage. If we had more than one image selected, then the edits would be applied to all the images we have selected in the range. The only trouble is, we get almost no control over what's happening to the images. They're all just one-click solutions. Now you'll find out what they all do throughout this series, but for now, I'd suggest that we don't need to use them. Unless, of course, you're in a real hurry. Now underneath these controls, we have basically free working environments to get the job done. We have the guided edit mode, which is the most basic of the three, probably where you want to start if you're new to image editing in general. Then we have the quick fix mode, which is a similar mode with less explanation of how things work. And then we have the full edit mode, which gives you everything Elements has to offer. And that of course is where we're going to end up. For now though, I'd like you to either hit the guided edit button down here, or come up to the editor menu at the top and choose Guided Edit. Now because we had an image active inside the organizer, that image is going to open up for us right here inside the Guided Edit mode. And things are going to change now because instead of working inside the organizer, as we have done so far, we're now working inside of the editor. And you can see that up here above the editing panel, we have all three of our modes. So even though we're working in one mode, the Guided Edit mode, we can very easily move to another mode because we have the editing environment open and ready to go. Okay, now the great thing about this mode, and as I said, the reason it's so good if you're new to image editing, is because even though everything's explained as we work, we still have the power to make different edits. Let me show you what I mean. I can come down here to the Enhance Colors option and select it. Now I'm getting guided through any changes I make to the colors inside the photograph. So for instance, it's telling me to click the button up here to automatically fix the colors in the image. But if I want to have a go at this myself, then I can come down here to the sliders, and again, it's telling me how these things work. So do I want to affect the hues in the image? Well, it says here that that's going to change the colors inside the image. Well, I don't want to actually change the colors, so let's have a look at the saturation option. That changes the intensity of color, as it says here, and that's exactly what I want. So let's move this slider around, and you can see by moving the saturation around, I'm either increasing or decreasing the intensity of colors inside the photograph. Now to accept the changes here, I could press Done, but I'm going to hit the Council button just to return the image to how it looked before, 
and that's pretty much it. That's the guided edit mode. I'm not going to spend too much time here because everything's explained so well inside the controls as you can see for yourself right here. So we're going to switch over to the quick fix mode by using the quick button at the top of the panel here. Now what we've got is a more direct route into all these image editing goodies right here. We're going to run through what they do in just a few moments, but for the time being, I want to run through a couple of key concepts that we can employ whilst using any three of the editing modes. The first one is navigating around the image. Over here on the left hand side, I have a mini tool palette and two of the tools available are going to come in really handy. Those being the zoom and the hand tool. I'm going to start by grabbing the little zoom tool that's represented by the magnifying glass icon. And just above that icon, we get a plus and minus sign. Inside Photoshop, plus is to zoom in and minus is to zoom out. So I can go ahead and select a zoom in. Then I can click the portion of the image I want to zoom in on. Once I've zoomed in to where I want to be, after a few clicks right here, I can then move around by selecting the hand tool from over here in the tools palette and then just dragging the image around like so. When I want to zoom out, I simply grab the zoom tool once again, set it to zoom out at the top here, and then just click until we get to the view ratio we want to be at. Okay, so let's check out some of these fixing options we have available here on the right hand side. The first one I want to look at is the smart fix option. And with this option, we get a slider to control how much smart fixing we're applying. We could press the auto button if we want to, but sometimes I'd say it's best to use your own judgment. And what's going on here is that Elements is applying a little bit of these fixes down here, a little bit of each of them. So basically, smart fixes trying to do the whole job in one hit. And you know what? It usually comes up with some pretty decent results. We've also got this automatic red eye fix here. And if you're working on a photograph of a person and their eyes have turned red because of the flash on the camera, then it may be worth a shot. It may be worth trying out to see if this is going to work for you. Sometimes it works great, other times it doesn't work at all. I'd recommend you check out my Removing Red Eye tutorial, available right here at freephotoshop.com for the best results possible. Okay, a couple of things to note. If I move the Smart Fix slider around, nothing's permanent until we either accept the change by clicking on the little green tick mark, or cancel that change and reset the values by pressing the little red cancel icon. If we do go ahead and accept the change, but then decide we don't like it, we can use the undo button right here at the top. And you're going to find that when you're working with elements on your own projects, you're going to be using these undo and redo buttons a lot of the time. In fact, I've got to say that for a lot of reasons, they're a great way to work. I use them all the time, personally. Anyhow, underneath the general fixes, we have the lighting fixes. So we can attempt to automatically fix the brightness level or the contrast level of the image. We can also lighten the shadows by this slider here, or darken the highlights by this slider here, or we can add more contrast into the midtones. And just so as you know, the highlights are the light areas of the image, such as the sky here, the shadows are the dark areas, such as the rocks up here, and the midtones are the colours that fall in between the shadows and highlights. Okay, next we get options that affect the colour of the image, so the saturation slider will either increase or decrease the vividness of the colours in the photograph. The hue slider will directly affect the actual colours based on the rotation of a standard RGB hue wheel. So it's more of a special effects slider really. It's just going to shift colours around. Not all that helpful for keeping the look and feel of a realistic photograph. Next we have the temperature, which either makes the image appear cooler, so we're emphasising blue in the photograph, or hotter, which emphasises red in the photograph. Likewise, we have a tint slider below that, which either tints the image green or magenta, depending on which way you point the slider. Finally, we have this sharpen option at the bottom here. Again, we'll be looking at all these concepts in more detail inside the full edit mode, but for now, what sharpening does to an image is gives it the appearance that the image is in sharper focus. It can't really create new details, but it can trick the eye into believing that it's seeing a more sharply focused photograph. And we can really see what's happening if we zoom into this bridge, for example, using the zoom tool, of course, from the tools palette. 
just a couple of clicks just in the middle here to get focused in on this bridge right here in the center of the image. Now if I increase the sharpening you can see that it makes the dark edges darker and the light edges lighter therefore creating the illusion that you're bringing the photograph into tighter focus which of course you're not. The only way you can really do that is to reshoot the photograph. Okay that just about wraps up this tour of the quick fix and guided edit modes. In the next video we're going to take a pretty awful image and attempt to fix it using the quick fix mode right here inside Photoshop Elements. Well once again thanks for joining me here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you in the next video.